Aloha! Hey, it's Julie Zemlis from 365 Hawaii, and today on 365 Kona Newbies, we are doing something new and interesting, and we are bringing you one of our kapuna from the island who is going to share with you um, some information about not only place but also life um, here um, back in the day. And I introduce you to Cindy Punahale, and she is Aloha. the project director of the Reef Teach program here at Ka'olu Beach Park. And I'm going to let her speak about life here. She was born in 1950, and she actually has some photos of what Ka'alu looked like back then. And she's going to talk a little bit about life growing up and what has happened over the last, you know, some odd years of her life. And then we can take some questions from the audience. Um, later on, she can answer some of your questions as well. So um, we're going to open it up and basically start from the very beginning when you were born. When I was born. <laughs> Well, I was uh, born in 1950, and uh, and Kona was very country. Um, I don't know if I could show, uh, a, could show a photo uh, of Kahalu back in uh, the 1950s. Actually, this was taken uh, taken in the 50s, and and you can see how country it looked. Uh, there was uh, uh, the roads that we see today were not as uh, as complete as as um, back in in the 50s. And my family was from uh, Kahalu as well as Makalawena and Ka uh, uh, Kalawa, so we we shared some similarities but there are also differences from those areas and as we came to uh, visit uh, different places in our families like at Kahalu it was very important that we were reverent and respected the place um, and so when we you know when we came to Kahalu and the families here uh, would talk with us about the area and, and, and we would get together. The abundance that we saw here was so, um, it was so prolific. I, and, and that's what I remember as, as I grew up, not only at Kahalu, but in different areas. Um, um, of the coastal uh, of the coastal areas like Makalawena, Mahalula, those areas that gave us life, and for us it wasn't about coming to the uh, to the coastal areas to snorkel or have fun. It was about survival. So we were. It was so important that we took care of place that these are treasures and you really respected the land like you would your sweetheart because you wanted and you knew that if you did that it would take care of you so so we grew up in what we call so we grew up in what we call uh pono practices and these were unwritten social codes that we shared with each other and they were values like only take what you need respect the others in uh, in the community that were coming after you so they needed to uh, they needed to uh, gather for their families and i think what we are missing as we move forward is those kinds of social practices that that don't need you don't need a dough care officer or enforcer behind you it for me it was part of my life i was taught that my from um, my kupuna and my my parents my dad and it became part of your your nature so when you went out, like my dad taught me how to throw net. So when you went out throwing net and you caught 
you knew what to throw back and what not to throw back. And that is how we live all of our lives. And I'm hoping that we can continue to educate our children and community on those aspects mm -hmm. of, of how, not only how to take care of place, but how to take care of each other. And we were very fortunate as, as um, and it's bittersweet, I will say, because tw uh, COVID uh, last year gave us a time for this bay to heal, because prior to um, um, COVID, uh, uh, pre-COVID, we were receiving over 400,000 visitors a year in this very small 4.2 um, acre park. So now we see a healing occurring I think we want to look at how we can um, continue to heal the area, but also look at balancing the biodiversity with economic recovery, because we also have to take care of our community. Okay, mm -hmm. that's true. So speaking of education, um, mm -hmm. some people want to know what was it really like to grow up here also during that time frame. Did you go to a school? I mean, was there a I school did. here? <laughs> <laughs> I did go to school, but school back then, you know, first, second, uh, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade were all in one, one very small schoolhouse. It really was like, uh, you know, what's that show? A Little House in the, the Prairie. prairie. <laughs> <laughs> because in my class, I only had mm, five students in uh, sixth grade, but we didn't have, um, you know, it was a difficult time for us here. We didn't have running water or inside facilities or um, electricity. We had to really uh, read by what we call a kukui light, you know, a little, um, kerosene lamp uh, and uh, we didn't have the 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 what we would call um what we would call today the luxuries of, <laughs> of yeah lighting and plumbing are cool <laughs> they are cool but it gave us this um this kind of relationship with the earth, that the earth was so important. Our hands were always in the ground or it was up if you were having a party because you're playing ukulele or you were gathering the community. But it was always about taking care of your family and taking care of your, um, your community. And for my dad, and I truly believe this for me, my brother, and my two brothers, it's teaching us those skills on the Mauka lands as well as the Makai lands, how to fish, how to hunt, how to dress a pig or, or pipi or, or cattle, because I really believe he felt that if something happened to him, we would be able to take care of my mom mm. because in in that time in the 40s and the 30s my mom was from Honolulu he married my mom from Honolulu a city girl at that time a silly city girl even in the 30s and she she moved here to Hawaii Island but at that time didn't have the skills to do or to care for herself. Mm. So uh, my dad was a great man. He always thought of us and he always thought of our, and he always thought of her and how we could take care of each other. And I'm very, very proud of that. And, and those are, are skills that I would like to share with our children. And, and that's why back in 2003, I was a part-time teacher oh. at Kealiki High, uh, High School, where we had uh, an agricultural um, 
project to teach your children those things how to raise animals how to um, how to dress them how to uh, how to build an emu mm -hmm. which is an underground oven as you all know uh, and and to from from caring for the animal to dressing it and then preparing it for food right and not only for the animals it was also about taking care of of the um, um, or or taking care of your egg side, your vegetables, so that y that was part of your um, survival, mm -hmm. and also taking care of the fish, how to clean your fish, how to dry it, how to prepare it properly, and what you have around you that you could use to actually uh, cook your fish, like tea leaves, mm -hmm. where banana. Um, banana uh, stumps were very important and we were always taught <clears throat> that you always ate and never waste mm -hmm. you always had uh, you always thought about what you were doing and you always bless the animals and and the plants that, that gave their life so you may sustain yours and that's always been part of the blessing. Do, um, so when you did the blessing, was this a Hawaiian, like a chant and only, or just like no. a prayer or? For us, it was, it, it was, um, it wasn't an only. Mm -hmm. And we, we were a, a family that didn't grow up in, uh, in that kind of an um, atmosphere mm -hmm. like, uh, or uh, that kind of activities. Like you would see um, a, a kumuhula mm -hmm. do that. Now, we, you know, for us, it was not an easy life. So it was a constant. You got up, you were, you were a hunter and a gatherer. Mm -hmm. I was a our family was a hunter and a gatherer, so it those um, activities were very special, mm -hmm. and they were always looked at as they were kumu, they were teachers, mm -hmm. right? teaching about, and those those what you call oli were very important because that's how they passed down information from one generation to another in chant or because we didn't have a book where mm -hmm. we could read all this information and we learn from observation which we call kilo kilo right mm -hmm. kilo is observation and that's what's important we learn about the vahipana these very sacred storied places like kahalu mm -hmm. kahalu is a vahipana but we are disconnected today from it because mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like one. When you walk into a place that is cherished, we, we have a feeling of respect. And not that people don't respect it because we love this beautiful place, but I think it's a matter of us educating and then bringing some traditional uh, knowledge mm -hmm. into into the space and sharing with our visitors and and being able to um, then afford them the the right to just enjoy the place understanding how important it is to be respectful and that's what we do with grief cage mm -hmm. right we, say, we share about the corals, about the turtles, and 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 99.9% .9 of all of you, and I love you because you are very respectful. Once that is, once they learn, right. Yeah. right. So going to that, okay. So now we've talked about you going to school here, and then you start to grow up. Mm -hmm. Did you leave the island to go? I did. You did. So what'd you do? I What's did. where'd you go? Well, <laughs> well, I graduated from Konawaina. Um, high school in 1968 okay. and I got a, a small scholarship from Kamehameha School so I decided 
I decided I wanted to move to the mainland to look at, to experience different, different areas. Uh, a lot of my uh, uh, high school classmates went to University of Hawaii, and, but just a few of us went, and I went to, the, uh, went to uh, Washington State, um, Eastern, Washington, Eastern Washington State. Uh, um, and that was in Cheney uh, by Spokane. Mm -hmm. But then I met my husband and, and there, and then I moved to New Jersey. Oh, <laughs> nice far away oh, from Hawaii. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, because the other part to me was when I was 15, 16, I really wanted to experience and see New York. And you know, it was it was an eye opener <laughs> <laughs> compared to having no running water when you're growing up in Hawaii. <laughs> wow, you know. But it was it was interesting because the when I when I uh, first moved to New Jersey, and I was on Broad Street, going into a shop and asked, I wanted some gum actually. And the first thing the the clerk said to me was what do you want and i've i've i never had that uh kind of you know usually here being very sheltered <laughs> or people, people are nice are very <laughs> <laughs> not in new york <laughs> like, why you know it was what do you want and so i just said i want just some gum and she goes it's over there like i should have known <laughs> But you know what I realized? I, I love, I, and I, I got to love New Jersey and, and New York and the people there because they were very, once they tested you, I guess it was a test for me, and then realized the kind of person I truly was, they are, they become friends for life. Hmm. And I still have New Jersey friends for life. And one of uh, one of my my friends there is actually my best friend, and so I I really appreciated the, uh, that uh, learning that kind of um, uh, what do you call that you know um, the way the way people treat you in different parts of, of the country. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I had a job where I went to different parts of the country, Illinois and, and um, down to Texas and California, because my job um, encompasses, uh, encompassed those, all, uh, those areas. But I found that every place that I, I uh, set my hat in, I always found a beauty there. Mm. There was a people or, or a, the place. And I realized that people are people. And the way you treat people is really important if you are looking to um, do create a successful program. And I always believe that with Aloha, those it it embraces the other person mm -hmm. and so when i created a, a program here it was the foundation was for our volunteers to be aloha ambassadors mm -hmm. and i think you know and, and i think for since 2006 i have volunteers here that have been with me since then and they truly are Aloha ambassadors. And I and a lot of our visitors and our volunteers um, come back and they want to join the, the Ohana family. Because you've created something pretty special. But they are special. <laughs> the volunteers are the treasures. Yes. You know? Yes. And they're they're to me they are precious. So after you did the whole thing in the United States, you know, the mainland, as they call it, you came back here. And I moved here in 19, back home in 1998, 
because I, I realized that I had lost so many years with my, my family and my mom and dad. And, you know, I, I thought, and I still do, even though they're not here with me today, they, they are my inspiration. Mm. And, but when I got, came back, my mom was already in the throes of Alzheimer's, which I didn't know. I couldn't understand it at first. Then I realized she was at a stage that um, was very, she was trying to hide it from us. Oh. And, and there were things that happened and, and we realized what was, what was going on. And I, I, I was very sad because I didn't have a chance to be with mom when she was healthy. Right. right. And that's what made me realize that the things that I do today and I look for in the future are creating positions that can support a young one coming up that can pay them a good salary so that they have a choice they can go away or they can stay home and and be with their families it's important right it, it's when, so when, um, important when we talk yeah. about people in, in, in reverse why people leave hawaii to go back mm -hmm. to the mainland is because sometimes aging parents and family yeah. And then family. they feel that it's important for them to spend time Absolutely. with them too. And so Absolutely. you came back for that. I did. I okay. did. And and the other, like for me, reason, really the main reason I, I went away is because I, at that time in 1968, I realized that I didn't have an opportunity to stay home and make a good living. Mm -hmm. I could have done, I could have worked for a hotel, like, you know, it, but I wanted to do more. And there wasn't those, uh, opportunities. those opportunities that, that, that the mainland could provide mm -hmm. for me. And so that's why it became, um, that's why it became a focus for me to look at creating jobs that can support uh, the young um, the young adults that are growing up here that can have an opportunity to stay, stay here. here. Yeah, because my uh, my my children are here too. And, yes, uh, like and my beautiful daughter. Yeah, and my son actually is thinking about going to the same school in Western Eastern Washington. Where is he? That you mentioned. So yeah. it's very interesting. I love um, it. So um, we're gonna see if there's any any questions. If you guys have uh, okay, let's let's have some comments. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Got, uh, uh, all right. So we've got uh, someone. Uh, Lance says awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, says, mahalo. Bren says, "What is her name? I could listen to her all day long." Ah, uh, so Cindy Puna Howley. And it's already on there. Okay. And then we've got uh, Aloha. What we've got going on, uh, but no questions. Yet. Okay, and then um, oh. Lance had asked a question about in another one. Yeah. Lance Bond had said. I think he wanted to know. Um, he had a question about what would what was what would Cindy say to somebody coming to Hawaii? What are the important most important things to know to be able to I think show respect to the people and to the land here? Because mm. a lot of these people are brand new to the island, yes. right? And also there are people yeah. on this group that are coming to this island soon yeah. and want to live here. And we keep talking about how can you live here in harmony with the indigenous culture with the land and with the way of life here. So like, yes. how would you show up? Well, I, I think it's, it's uh, creating a, a sense, not only of respect, but being humble and listening to the, um, listening to the land, you know, Listen, listening to, uh, we, we have a tendency to always want to project what we think. But I think it's really important if, if people just listen, even, even though they, they may not agree, 
but I think it's it's great to um, um, to still disagree, but but be respectful. But in in Hawaii, because we have such a, a we're a, a, a we're really a different animal. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way we respect it is to be uh, to listen, and that's one of the things that our volunteers at like. You know, John, very, very, uh, very uh, good at that is you, if you're listening, then you'll, you'll find some common ground. Mm -hmm. And then you start to build on that common ground. Locals really want to have uh, the visitors understand and respect their place. So if you come to a place like uh, Kahalu, mm -hmm. it would be wonderful to just read a little bit about the place and, and, and the history of it. And we're trying to do that real right now, trying to look at uh, sharing that kind of history, this kind of history, what the vahipana of this place, the energy that, that created the place, what is the Minihuni wall, why why is it so important where if we can have that kind of understanding and then i think we can build from that mm -hmm. it's it's you learn you come you listen uh, be respectful have humbleness and trust you know because once all of these things come into place i think that you people will embrace you mm. Yeah. So, when you come with some knowledge and be curious and be to learn curious. more. Mm -hmm. and I think so. Because I think that when, when people talk about traveling overseas, um, they say, at least if you try and speak the language a little bit, at least if you show that you've done something before you show before up, you <laughs> that it looks like at least you're showing respect to the culture. Yeah. Right? And I, I think, I, I think so. I've learned now that it's not just Hawaii. I think it's like oh, Europe everywhere. and any other culture. Yeah. I think Americans sometimes forget that because we don't expect that from people coming to America sometimes. Right. 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 So. right. And I, I think, you know, if, if like we're trying so hard to take care of our Aina, take care of our uh, the marine resource, resources. And, and the things that we look at, like sunscreen, um, to uh, to look into those uh, um, products that that can help support the Aina, support you. I think that also is a, a, a good, uh, you know, a good preparation before you come. Before right. you come, and um, also when you know Cover something now like about something, then it's your job to share it with others. Right. Yes, so for all the then, new residents who come, then they should tell the people they bring to visit. Mm -hmm. Please watch your sunscreen. Wear a rash guard. Come yeah. with some knowledge. Here's a book. Read up on Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, and and I think then when you're talking to each other, uh, it it there's there's a there's a commonality. I mean, there's a, a you know this this kind of attraction mm -hmm. and embracing. And, and it's much more um, fulfilling. And, and I think, and then that's where the respect comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the aloha. And the aloha. <laughs> aloha is so important. Yes. That's why you, you, for me, it's always educating with aloha. Right, right. And uh, if you guys want to be able to come and talk to Cindy, she's here sometimes. I don't know if you have a set time I, that you're here. I don't have a set time because there is other, I, I'm doing some other things, big, big things. But, but if you email me and say, Cindy, I'm going to, I, you know, I'd love to come and, and just sit down and talk story with, with all of you. And then 400 people okay. show up. <laughs> what, what, what? Can right now, Eddie. <laughs> so, so uh, Lance says, uh, please tell Cindy uh, she conveys the uh, llama for the Aina so Ah, there we go. Malama and um, yeah. And just so and, and that's an interesting one too. Is it? It's not Malama the Aina. It's Malama Aina, right? Is that how do you? How Malama do you, Ika Aina. Malama Ika Aina. Malama Ika Aina. Okay. 
So yeah. there you guys learned something new there. Um, so we're going to wrap this up. And um, like I said, I know we, we told me give them a half an hour. Um, if you came in late or if you missed it, we're going to also show it up on YouTube so you can share this with other people as well so more people get a chance to um, hear uh, Cindy's wonderful words. And also, um, if you have ideas of other people that you want us to interview or if you want to hear more from Cindy, let us know. She's awesome. And uh, thank you so much for being thank here with you, us. And Julie. I'm glad you got a chance to be our first person being interviewed for the talk yeah. story. And thank you so much for uh, joining us today. I really appreciate that. Okay, you guys. Malama po no. Ahoy ho. Ahoy ho.